after the sample one-way ANOVA. So as you can see guys, for on our sample one-way analysis of variance, we have here the source of variation. So under the source of variation, we have between groups and within groups. So for example, I will I will have some basic simple illustration here. Welcome to our new topic. So for this presentation, we will going to have our topic regarding the analysis of variance, specifically the introduction part of the ANOVA, which is analysis of variance, and the first type of ANOVA, which is the one-way ANOVA. Okay, so let's start our discussion. Again, this is the uh, fifth chapter of the statistical analysis for IE2, analysis of variance or the ANOVA. So before we proceed with the one-way ANOVA, let's just define first what is an analysis of variance. So basically, when we say analysis of variance, guys, this allows researchers to compare two or more populations of interval and ratio data. I hope you are still familiar with the interval and ratio data. This has been discussed with the basic statistics on descriptive statistics to one last semester. So it is the extremely powerful and commonly used statistical procedure. So the analysis of variance or what we call simply the ANOVA technique determines whether differences exist between population means. So, for example, most basic example, I will try to compare if your class has difference with the other class. Okay, so the your class versus the my class before and my class tomorrow and on the next day, something like that. So, I will try to see if there's a difference or none. If that is the case, I will use analysis of variance. Okay, so I hope you get it. Next. Just like what I have said before, we have different types of ANOVA. The first one is the one-way ANOVA, which will be, uh, we will going to discuss this one-way ANOVA in this presentation. And the second one is the randomized block design, or simply RBD. And the third one is the two-way ANOVA. Okay, so again, one-way ANOVA, randomized block design, and the two-way ANOVA. So let's now have this additional definition of ANOVA. It says here that the analysis of variance test whether there is enough statistical evidence to show that the null hypothesis is false. So that is the one of the purpose of the ANOVA. And if the null hypothesis is true, the population means would be equal or we would expect that the sample means are close to one another. Because as you can still remember, guys, when we say null hypothesis, this is the hypothesis that contains equal sign. Okay, when we write it into mathematical sentence. That's why, again, when the null hypothesis is true, it is not rejected, it, it has been failed to be rejected, the population means would be equal or we would expect that the sample means are close to one another. Okay? So, let's go now to the one-way analysis of variance or simply one-way ANOVA. When we say one-way ANOVA, we have these different assumptions. Just like before on our previous topics, we have statistical assumptions. So for the first assumption, the samples are randomly selected and independently assigned to groups. Second assumption, it must be homogeneous. The population should be homogeneous. It says here that the population should have approximately equal if not exactly equal approximately equal is enough standard deviation or the homogeneous type of standard deviation almost equal among all other populations now for the third assumptions of the one-way analysis of variance is that the population distribution among all of those population that we are trying to compare should be normally distributed Okay, so normal distribution tapat yung curve natin. We have here the sample one-way ANOVA. So as you can see guys, for on our sample one-way analysis of variance, we have here the source of variation. So under the source of variation, we have between groups and within groups. So for example, I will, I will have some basic simple illustration here. For example, we are trying to compare three population three data set so here's the first one here's the second one okay and here's the 
third one. So when we say between groups, for example, their center is here. Okay. So here's the first population, second population, and the third population. When we say between groups, we are finding the variations between groups. So from this mean up to the mean of the whole. This is the the total mean. The the mean of all the populations. Okay? So, ito. May mean siya dito. May mean siya dito. May mean din naman siya dito. This is the mean sub 2, sub 1, and sub 3. And ito yung total mean nilang tatlo. So, when we say between groups, yung mean dito hanggang dito, dito hanggang dito sa pangkalahatan, and dito hanggang dito. Okay? That is between groups. When we say within groups, so, so eto lang yan, yung nasa loob. No, yung, yung variation sa loob ng population na yan, and yung variation sa loob ng population na yan. Lahat, no, yung variation sa loob within groups nga ang sinasabi. Okay, that is the sources of variations. And after that, we have this SS or the sum of squares. So, we have the sum squares for between groups, sum of squares within groups, and DF stands for the degrees of freedom. So, we have here degrees of freedom between groups, degrees of freedom within groups, and of course, the MS. Now, what is MS? MS actually stands for mean square. So, we have mean square between groups. We also have mean square within groups. Now, we have here the F value. This is computed by just dividing the two MS. And of course, the P value, if we are trying to have the P value as our basis for our decision, whether to reject or to fail to reject the hypothesis and of course the f critical we're in dito natin tinitingnan kung rejected ba or not rejected ang ating null hypothesis versus sa ating f value or simply this is what we call the f computed lagi namang ganun di ba critical versus computed based on our hypothesis testing topics before lagi namang ganyan and even sa correlation and regression analysis Okay, so don't forget this is how the one-way ANOVA looks like, okay? So let's have our example problem here, one-way ANOVA. A concerned consumer organization was interested in determining whether any difference existed in the average life of four different brands of fluorescent bulbs. So marami silang uh, brands of fluorescent bulbs na in-study, apat, no? A random sample of five fluorescent bulbs of each brand so, may lima sa brand A, sa second brand, merong lima din, sa third brand, merong lima, sa bang apat na brand, merong din lima. So, all of those bulbs has been tested with the following results in months. Okay, so these are all in months. Ano po ulit to? Average life. Yung average life. Ibig sabihin, sa brand A, 12 months yung unang bumbili ya, 12 months tumagal bago na pundi, bago na sira. Okay? Yung pangalawa, 13 months tumagal. 14 months yung pangatlo. 11 months yung pangapat. 15 months yung panglima. Sa brand A. Same scenario guys for brand B, brand C, and brand D. So, tinignan nila, ginamit nila. Then, ito yung tagal. Ganito katagal before nasira. And ito yung average life nila. Now, at alpha level 0 0.05, is there signi evidence of significant difference? in the average life of these four brands of fluorescent bulbs. Gusto nilang malaman, no, may pagkakaiba ba yung tagal ng buhay ng isang bumbilya if brand A yung ginamit ko versus brand B versus brand C versus brand D or baka naman kahit anong brand dyan yung bilhin ko, okay lang dahil halos pare-pareho lang naman sila ng average life. No, yung lifespan nila before silang masira or mapunde. Ayun yung hinahanap natin dito sa analysis of variance. And the reason why it is, why it is called, guys, a one-way analysis of variance is that isa lang ang meron tayo, which is what we call the uh, treatment. No? Isa lang ito, per column lang ang tingin natin. Wala pa tayong perspective na per row, okay? Dahil we're just comparing the four different populations here. Okay, so let's start our solution. Of course, Tulad ng dating gawe, we should start with the hypothesis. Okay, so for our null hypothesis, our null hypothesis should be 
the population for brand A is equals to population for brand B equals also to population to brand C and equals to population to brand D. Ibig pong sabihin, this hypothesis, this specific null hypothesis says that all the fluorescent bulbs have equal lifetime means. Sinasabi natin, since equal yung ginamit natin dyan, pare-pareho yan. Kahit anong bilhin mo, pare-pareho ng tagal yung buhay nila. Okay? So, for the alternative hypothesis, simply lang, what we will going to do is to have the population of the brand A not equals to population to brand of brand B, which is also not equals to population of brand C, and also not equals to the population of brand D. We are saying here on the alternative hypothesis that not all the fluorescent bulbs have equal lifetime means. So, hindi sila pare-pareho. Yung ibang brand dyan, mas matagal. Yung ibang brand, mas mabilis naman magbuhay. Uh, yung buhay nila, yung lifespan nila. No? Yung, yung time before mapunde. Ayun yung sinasabi naman ni alternative hypothesis. Okay? Now, uh, the level of significance is actually 0.05. So, let's write it here. We have the alpha level 0.05. Okay? So, next thing that we should do now is to find the degrees of freedom and the critical value of F. Okay, again, we should do now, we should find now the, the degrees of freedom and the critical value of F. Okay, so guys, before natin gawin yan, we have this uh, ANOVA table. I have prepared this ANOVA table. Bakit ko po inuna ito no, before tayo mag-solve doon? Dahil, as you can see, based also sa na-explain ko kanina, degrees of freedom is also part of the ANOVA table. One-way ANOVA table, ito po. Meaning to say, kung ano man yung makuha natin na values for this degrees of freedom, we will go and to write it there sa ating ANOVA table, sa one-way ANOVA table. Okay, so let's check ano ba yung kailangan natin degrees of freedom. We have here, Degrees of freedom for between groups, it is also called as the treatments, guys. Ito yung uh, per column na binabanggit ko kanina. So, treatments is just equals to brand A, brand B, brand C, and brand D. So, kukunin natin yung degrees of freedom dyan. Next, uh, degrees for, of freedom for within groups. Okay, so let's have our computation. For the degrees of freedom between groups, let's have it as df sub bg. So, since this is between groups, the formula will be c minus 1. Now, ano po itong c na to? This c stands for the number of columns or the number of groups or simply the number of population. Ilan ba yung meron tayong population? 1, 2, 3, Four. So, that will be our C. So, 4 minus 1, this is 3. So, basically, our degrees of freedom between groups is 3. So, let's write it here. So, diba? Ganun lang kadali. Si one way, ano ba? <laughs> Pero, hindi pa po tayo tapos. So, let's uh, compute now the degrees of freedom for within groups. Okay? So, degrees of freedom within groups, let's have it here. DF sub WG for within groups and this is formula naman dito N minus C. So, ano naman itong N? No, N stands for sample. Ilan ba yung sample natin? Hindi po apat but rather we have 20. So, bakit naging 20? Because each population or each group of data we have their 5 samples and we have total of 4 groups so 5 times 4 is 20. Meaning, ilan silang lahat yung mga numero na yan. That is n. Okay, so let's have it here. 20 minus c. Again, our c here is 4. Therefore, our degrees of freedom within groups is equivalent to 16. So let's write it here. 16. Okay, now, for the total, 3 plus 16, we have here 19. For the total degrees of freedom. Okay. Now, ino natin kuhanin yan dahil ang next natin kukuhanin will be the value of F critical. Okay. 
Now, this F critical po, ang gagawin po natin dyan, actually, this is F sub 3 and 16. Ano tong 3 and 16? Simply, the degrees of freedom between groups and within groups. Ayun po yung purpose, kaya nauna natin kuhanin, the degrees of freedom. Dahil kakailanganin natin siya in our, uh, in, in finding our value for the F critical. Okay, now, for the F critical, we also have the table for that. This is it, no? This is what we call, guys, the F distribution. Take note lagi sa alpha level. Ito kasi ang gamit nating alpha level is 0.05. So, this table is for 0.05. There is different table for our alpha level 0.01 and any other alpha level. No, anyway, rest assured in our exam. If 0.05 tayo dito, ayun na rin ibibigay ko na para sa inyong gagamitin ninyong table. Okay, now, let's have it here. Numerator degrees of freedom, that is the C-1. Again, that C-1 is our degrees of freedom uh, BG, sub BG, or G between groups, and that is equals to 3. So, 3 tayo dito sa taas, nasa yung 3, eto. Next. Uh, for this denominator degrees of freedom, that is n minus k or n minus c in our formula, and that is 16. So let's go find the number 16 and their intersection. So we have 3 and 16, that is 3.24. Meaning to say, guys, the value of our f critical will be 3.24. That is the. Let's write it here. Ito hindi na talaga siya part ng. ANOVA table, ilalagay ko lang para ma-compare natin mamaya, no? So, 3.24. Dahil dito, makukuha natin yung value ng F computed. Okay? So, that is our F critical. Next thing to do natin is to have or to compute for the value of F test. No? Ito na. Ang value ng F test is nandito sa dulo ng ANOVA table. Now, hindi tayo makakapunta dyan without going dito muna sa sum of squares between groups and within groups and total sum of squares and of course the mean square between groups and within groups before tayo makapunta dito dahil yung formula po for finding the value of the F is nakadepende sa mga naunang mga values na yan nandito okay, eto wala tayong laman dito we will going to leave this as blank and eto rin no, ayan Okay, so para ma-solve po natin, unahin natin isolve si SSBG or the sum of squares between groups or other terms sa kanya is sum of squares for the treatment. We need to have our Excel na lang siguro para mas madali akong mag-explain. No? I prefer the Excel file here. So let's go here. Ayan. As you can see, ito na po yung... Uh, given natin no? parehong pareho kinapi ko lang I will teach you guys the manual way the manual computation now if some of you will will going to ask me sir pwede bang calculator yes of course no I just use excel here para mas madali yung computation and mas makita ninyo how how the data flows no paano paano gumagalaw yung mga data natin paano yung relationship ng computation natin kasi pag calculator pabalik balik tayo okay anyway so, first thing to do is to find the means of all the groups. So, kuhanin natin yung average per population. Okay? So, average for brand A, brand B, and brand C. So, simply, we should use the function of Excel average. This is the manual way, guys. Later on, I will teach you the second way, the using the data analysis, no? the function of Excel. So, let's have here average... So, average ng brand A. Highlight na lang ito. Hanggang dito. So, meaning, ayan, ang average niya is 13. By the way, I have also prepared here a blank ANOVA table. Wala pang laman. Pwede na natin lagyan dito. Actually, yung DF. Ayan, 3 and 16. O, lagay na natin. So, 3 and 16. For the total, sum lang natin yan. 19 ang narabas. Okay, so we enter, we center natin para maganda tignan. Okay, ito rin, center din natin. So, average for the for the first population is 13. Copy-paste natin para makuha yung average for brand B, brand C, and brand 
D. So this is the average uh, per population. And after nyan, we need to have again the average of all these averages. That is what we call the grand mean. Okay, so average natin lahat ng mga average nila. So highlight ito, enter. So this is the grand mean, 12.85. Okay? So, bakit po natin yan kinuha? Dahil kakailanganin natin siya in solving for the value of our sum of squares between groups or again, that is also called as the sum of squares within groups. For now, let's go back to our PowerPoint presentation. Let's have the formula. Okay? So, formula for SSB, sum of squares between groups. So, let's have it here. Ayan. SSB equals summation of N. Let's have it here, J. So, J is from 1 up to the C. So, meaning, ano ba yung una no, summation ng mga number natin sa loob from first column up to the last column. That is the meaning ng variables na to. Summation of X sub J, yung laman na value of, or observation value sa loob ng isang column, no? Yung mean non minus yung grand mean natin. That's why we get first the grand mean. And a square po natin. So, this is the formula for sum of squares between groups. I hope hindi nyo po siya makalimutan. Formula for SSB. Please take it down, mga guys. Mag-take kayo ng notes para hindi nyo makakalimutan. Dahil we will use this topic pa rin pagdating nyo ng fourth year. If ever na your thesis or your feasibility study needs to have an ANOVA table. So, baka kailanganin nyo din siya. Okay? So, pagkakalimutan yung ating ano ha? Yung ating formula. Now, since we have here x sub j bar, uh, x bar sub j minus x bar sub gm squared, Itong x bar sub gm, ito po yung na-compute natin dito na 12.85. Now, this x bar of j, this stands for x bar of the group, no or x bar sub a, x bar sub b, x bar sub c, x bar sub d. Ito po yun. Itong 13, 12.6, 13.8, and 12. Meaning to say, we will going to have the difference ng lahat ng yan, so, zoom out tayo konti. Don't mind this, guys, no? Ito yung ANOVA table natin. Dito tayo maglalagay. Solution ko yan dito sa baba. Scratch tayo. So, we need to have, dahil sabi kasi, no? Sabi doon, uh, ima-minus muna natin. Kasi ayun yung nasa loob ng parenthesis, eh, no? So, minus muna natin. Ito, minus natin dito. And since, Ito, i-copy-paste din natin siya dito sa mga susunod para makopya yung formula for brand B, brand C, and brand B. We need to lock this. So, just click, guys, on your keyboard, Fn, hold it, then click F4. So, bandang taas yan para mag-lock. No, lalabas itong dollar sign. Again, Fn plus F4, maglalock siya. Ibig kong sabihin, if you're going to copy this and paste this hanggang dito sa pang-apat, dahil na, pang-apat lang naman yung population natin, paste nyo to. As you can see, the formula here, ayan o, paulit-ulit siya na ito, yung red, ito, una ta unahin natin, no? A minus E8. Ito yun, 13 minus 12.85. Ito naman, uh, B8 minus E8. Ito naman. Ang nauurong lang, guys, yung cell na hindi natin nilock. Okay, then yung cell na nilock natin, which is the cell C E8 ng X cell, ayun ay hindi siya nauurong. Dahil nga nakalock. Okay, so that that is this one. Ito, nasa loob. Okay na tayo for that. Now, ang kailangan natin gawin is i-multiply yan sa N, then have the square. Okay? Now, let's have it here. 5 times. Bakit po 5? Dahil lahat naman sila, yung n nila sa loob is 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Lahat naman. Pantay naman yung table. So, we have here 5. Oops. 5 times this 1. And square. Okay. So, square natin. 
answer is 0.1125. Ganun din dito hanggang sa dulo. Okay, ayan. Now, na itong mga values na yan, let's go back to our formula. Sabi ko nga, di ba, like, kung inuulit sa mathematics, hindi nyo kailangan intindihin or hindi nyo kailangan kabisaduhin, rather, kung ano man yung pagkasunod-sunod na step. Tingin ka lang sa formula, malalaman mo na kung anong gusto niyang sabihin sa'yo. So, ngayon na nakuha na natin ito, nasaan po yan sa formula? Kanina kasi, ito yun. Ito yung nasolve natin. Pero ngayon, dahil minultiply na natin sila sa 5, ito na po yun, yung n. And in-square na rin natin sila, so extend na yan natin. Ito nakuha na. Meron na tayo yung kabuuan nito. Kaso, ang sinasabi ng formula, we should sum it up from first part, from first column up to the last column, up to the fourth column. So, meaning, we should add, add this. No? So, sum, add lang natin. Ito hanggang dito. Okay, so 8.55. That is now, guys, the value of our SSB. So, let's write it here. SSB is equivalent to 8.55. You can have the manual computation dito kung mas prefer nyo yung manual and kung prefer nyo naman using Excel and software, pwede rin naman. No, ulitin ko po, it just so happen na magkakaiba tayo ng, ng preferred methodology. Ako kahit ano dyan, no, pwede kong gawin. Uh, mas madali lang talaga sa Excel. Pinili ko siya sa Excel dahil may kita ninyo yung mga data. Kasi marami kasi eh, kapag manual ito, mat medyo matagal din tayo. Isa yung sa advantage. And ano pa, for now, we have this 8.55. No, nasa pagtingin nyo yan sa formula kung saan nyo unahin. Basta same ang sagot sa dulo, okay lang po sa akin. Okay, so let's have here 8.55 equals then 8.55. Okay, so meron na tayo. Balik tayo sa PowerPoint. No? Lagyan natin yung table natin dito. May, may dumagdag eh. So, 8.55. Okay. So, next natin, we have now the total muna tayo. Mamaya, may techniques tayong gagawin to find the value of the sum of squares within groups. For now, let's have the sum of squares total. So, for the formula, for the sum of squares total, the formula there is summation of x squared minus g squared over n. Okay, so since ayan ang formula, ulitin natin. Anong sinasabi ulit ng formula? Una daw, summation daw ng x squared. What is x squared? Or what is x muna? This x guys stands for the value of our given. Itong mga numbers sa loob. 12, 13, 14, 11, 15. Those are our x. So, sabi ng formula, yung x down natin, square natin yon lahat, isa-isa, then i-add natin sila. That is the summation of x squared. Okay? I hope you get it. Dito muna tayo magpo-focus. No, wag nyo muna titihin yung pangalawang part ng ating formula. So, let's go to our uh, Excel. So, copy, ano natin, no? I, tawag dito, i-square natin sila. So, ito. Don't mind this again. This is just a sketch. Kumbaga sa papel sketch paper ko po yan. So, ito, square daw natin. Base to 2. Okay? Same dito sa brand B and sa brand D. Kumbaga, uulitin natin tong table na yan, pero lahat ng value sa loob naka-square. So, para mas mabilis, no? Highlight, copy, and paste. Tapat na row. Okay, so ayan, naka-square na lahat. Nagawa na po natin yung x square. Ayan na yun. No, ang wala tayo, ito, okay na yung x square. Ayan na yun eh. Ang wala tayo ngayon is yung summation. So, i-add natin lahat ng yan. So, i-sum natin. Then, highlight all this data. Enter. Okay, so that is 3,371. Okay, so meron na tayo dito. 3,000. 371 minus. Ito naman guys, itong g squared natin, this stands for grand total ng mga x natin. Then, we will go into square them. Okay, paano po yun? So, isam natin lahat, grand total nga eh, di ba? Ito yun, yung mga x. Isam natin, okay, then square. So, raise to 2. That is equivalent to 66,000 49. Okay, so let's go to our PowerPoint. Let's write it. 
66,049. Naka-square na yan ha. Baka square nyo pa ulit. Lalaki na lalo yung value. And our value of n. Okay? Our value of n is 20. Kung ilan sila. No, diba? Sabi natin, 20 sila. Ito, 5 times 4. That is 20. Okay? So, meaning... 3,371 minus 66,049 over 20. That is the value of our SST. And since these are all nasa Excel naman siya, diretso na natin doon. Nasaan po yun? Dito tayo mag-compute. Ito. Ito po yun, 3,371 minus parenthesis 66,049 divided by 20. Dahil 20 sila. Pero if, guys, if uh, it happens na hindi nyo alam po ilan sila, kunyari, sobrang dami, sobrang dami, no? Sobrang dami ng data. Pwede mo siyang bilangin, no? Using the formula ng Excel na count. Ayan. So, count. Highlight mo lahat. Bibilangin niya yan. Parang inutusan mo siya, eh, hindi ko alam yung bilang niya, eh. Ayaw ko magbilang ng mano-mano. Parang ganun. Ikaw magbilang Excel. So, count. Tapos, highlight mo. Ang value din ito, itong pound A3 to D7 is equivalent to 20 rin naman. Okay, then, huwag kalimutan magdagdag ng parenthesis to close the formula and enter. So, we have here 68.55. So, meaning to say, 68.55 ang value ng ating SST or ng sum of squares total. Okay? 68.55. 55. Let's write it sa ating ANOVA table. 68.55. Okay. Sa Excel din naman, lagay natin. Equals na lang natin dito para makopya siya. Now, as you can see guys, we have here already the value for sum of squares between groups or other term niya, sum of squares for the treatment, and the sum of squares total. And ito kasi, at ito, kapag inad mo, ito yung total niya. Kaya nga siya total na tinawag. Ibig kong sabihin, we don't need to compute for the within groups anymore na mahabang computation pa. What we will going to have now is i-minus lang natin sila. Okay? So, total minus the between groups. So, that will be 60. That will be the value of our SS error or the SS within groups. Okay? So, let's write it here. 60. O, diba? Napakadali. Ganun lang. O, oh, diba? Lagayin natin dito sa ating formula. SS uh, error ba yun? Ano bang nilagalimut ako? SSE. Okay, SSB and SSE. So, SSE stands for sum of squares error. Okay? Or within groups na lang. SSW na lang tayo dahil T ang ginamit natin dito. So, SSW. So, SSW equals SST minus SSB. Ayun. Between tsaka within. No? And SSW equals SST is 68.55 SSB is equivalent to 8.55 So, SSW will be equals to 60. Okay. So, nasulat na ba natin siya dito? Ayan, nasulat na pala kanina. Okay, so for our Excel, okay na yan. Our next na gagawin, guys, will be to find out the value of the mean square between groups and the MS within groups. Okay? So, for our value of the MS between groups and the MS within group, napakadali lang po niya, that is just the D, uh, the the difference or rather the division na itong SS between groups divided by sa DF. So, sulat natin dito yung formula para makuha ninyo. So, MSB is equivalent to SSB over degrees of freedom sub BG. Now, for the MSW naman, that is equivalent to the sum of squares within groups over degrees of freedom within groups. Okay, so let's have it on our Excel. No, ito po. Ito, divided by this one. So that is 2.85. Then for this one, ito, divided by the DF. That is 
75. Okay, so ayan ang ating value for our mean square or this is what we also we call the variance, no? And for the F, guys, let's have it here for the formula sa pag-compute ng F. Simple lang din naman itong F. So, F is equivalent to MSB over the MSW. I-divide lang po natin sila. Okay, so, solve natin. MSB over MSW. Kaya sabi ko kanina, no, we can find the value of the F, the F computed, if hindi tayo nadaan dito sa tatlong ito. Kasi kailangan po sila. Therefore, our F computed is 0.76. So, that is our F computed. And, if that is the case, guys, let's have first, no, before tayo mag, ano, mag, proceed sa decision rule and sa computation. Let's check muna kung tama ba tayo pagdating sa data analysis. No, yung mas mabilis na way. Ito po, ituturo ko sa inyo. Make sure na activated yung inyong data analysis. Just go to this tab, data, and ito, yung pinag-usapan natin last time. No, inactivate natin ito last time, yung data analysis ninyo. So, just click this one. And, as you can see, we have here ANOVA single factor, ANOVA two factor with replication, and ANOVA two factor without replication. So basically, ANOVA single factor is just the same with the one way ANOVA. ANOVA two factor with replication is just the two way ANOVA. And ANOVA two factor without replication, this is equivalent to randomized block design. So since we are tackling all about the one way ANOVA, ang kakuhanin po natin is this single factor. Okay? Now, for the input range, let's highlight this brand A hanggang brand B hanggang sa dulo ng data na given. And since hinighlight natin yung mga labels po nila, brand A, brand B, brand C, and brand D, we must click this labels in first row. For our algorithm, nung al algorithm ng Excel software na to, para makita niya na, ah, yung unang row pala na mga hinighlight na itong user na to is label. No, ayun po siya. Per column ang group natin, dapat naka-on ito. No? Alpha value natin is 0.05. Let's check. 0.05. Ayun, 0.05 level of significance. So, tama naman. And for the output range, this is the section or the part of your worksheet kung saan mo siya gustong palabasin. So, if ito yung clinic mo, output range, click natin itong G2. Meaning, dito mag start yung result niya. If you will click this new worksheet play, magkakaroon tayo ng panibagong worksheet dito. So, if new workbook, mag-open siya ng bagong Excel file. Ayun po yung pinagkaiba ng mga up output options. And for our convenience, it is better to have uh, this output range click na lang. Ito na lang pipiliin natin. Okay? So, I hope you get it. Guys, by the way, if you wanted to have some Excel uh, tutorial from basic to advanced, I have a separate playlist for that. No? Just browse this channel. Okay, so ito, click natin yan. Then, okay, kapag okay na yung mga input, just click okay. Then, it will give you the final ANOVA table. Ayun, no? lahat-lahat. No, from summary, from counting, nakita natin dito, we have 5, 5, 5. Dahil kada group, we have 5 data. So, sum nila, yung average nila, dinan nyo to, pareho, oh. 13, 12.6, 13.8, and 12. Same sa na-compute natin. 13, 12.6, 13.8, and 12. Mas mabilis ito dahil uh, automatic na. We have used data analysis. Dito kasi lahat ng computation is manual nating kinumpute. No, tayo yung naglalagay ng formula. So, ito po ang ating final na ANOVA table. As you can see guys, tama naman tayo. We have 8.55, 60, 68.55. Ayan, 3.60, 19. 360, 19, 2.85, 3.75, 2.85, 3.75, 0.76, 0.76. And may additional pa siya. No, p-value if you want to have your decision or your conclusion using the p-value. And the f-critical na computed natin, which is equivalent to 3.24 if we have used 2 decimal. Check natin, 3.24 ba tayo? Ayun, saktong-sakto, parehong-pareho. No, so, I think... 
we can now move on to decision rule and conclusion since okay na tayo. Now, it is up to you kung anong gagamitin ninyo. Mag-manual computation kayo sa papel, okay lang sa akin using calculator. Mag-manual computation kayo sa Excel, okay lang. Or gumamit kayo ng data analysis ng Excel, okay lang. Ang importante sa akin is you know the foundation, you know the analysis behind kung ano ba yung nangyayari sa mga numero. No, so, malalim na analysis, that is my main concern here. So, the methodology, it is all up to you. We have different learning styles, okay? So, let's now move on to our decision rule. Okay, now, since we have the computed value, which is 0.76, and it is less than the F critical, obvious naman sa ating ano ba, mas maliit ang F computed versus sa F critical, Therefore, no, if igagraph po natin yan, si F critical nandito, si F computed nandito. Eh, nandito yung rejection region natin eh, di ba? Naalal din nyo? Dito rejection region. Ibig sabihin, si F computed is wala sa rejection region. At alpha level 0.05, the statistical decision is to fail to reject the null hypothesis. Since our F computed is not on the critical region. So, fail to reject now, we have failed to reject the null hypothesis. Ibig kong sabihin, since failed to reject siya, tama ang null hypothesis natin. Tama ang sinasabi niya na population A is equivalent to population B, equivalent also to population C, and equivalent also to population D. Meaning to say, whatever brand pa yung binin mo, pare-pareho lang ng average lifespan yan. Lahat ng bumbilya na yan. Pare-pareho lang ng itatagal. Okay, ayun yung nasa conclusion natin. For formality, we have this conclusion. Since the null hypothesis has not been rejected because we failed to reject it, we can conclude that there is not enough evidence, take note, not enough evidence that shows significant difference. No, wala tayong ebidensya na may pagkakaiba yung mga life, average lifetime of the fluorescent bulbs. Therefore, halos pare-pareho lang po sila kahit anong brand pa yung bilhin ninyo. Okay, so that's basically how statistics is working. I hope na realize ninyo yung purpose ng topic na to, no? Ano, ano analysis of variance one way ano ba? So this is not the end, guys. We still have analysis of variance randomized block design and the two way ano ba? Okay, I hope you learned something from this presentation. Sana na ipaliwanag ko ng step by step and very detailed ang lahat ng mga dapat ninyong malaman with one-way analysis of variance. So, thank you for being with me on this presentation. I am looking forward for the mastery of the subject. Thank you again, guys. Keep safe always. Bye-bye!